Welcome to this training on completing the EIN process with SAP Business One. This particular uh, video is specifically in relation to creating the EIN for the financial year 2020, ending 30th, 30th of June 2020. If you have different periods, then you can follow a similar step for that as well. So to start off with, before the financial year ends, you must create the new posting periods for the subsequent year. To do that, you go to Administration, System Initialization, and Posting Periods. So in here, you'll see all the posting periods that exist in the system. Um, and to create a new period, so you can see here that I've got period until 30th of June 2020, and I want to create the, my posting period from 1st of July 2020 to 30th of June 2021. So I simply go and click on new period and then I enter a period code. As you can see my period code for the previous year was 2020 so I'm going to call this 2021 and the sub period in this case is always most likely to be months. I mean that's a recommended. We generally wouldn't suggest using year as a posting period because you cannot control things uh, when you do that, so some people may have days because their periods are set up as four, four, five. Uh, you know, generally it's either months or days. So here I've got picked months. I've got twelve months, and then my posting dates from the first of July, twenty twenty to thirtieth of June, twenty twenty one. Now the due date should be pushed out a bit so that it covers your payment terms that you have. So if let's say your longest payment terms are three months, then you know at the end of the financial year you might have invoice that's going to fall due in September. And if you don't have the period due date um, um, moved out far enough, then you'll start getting that error message uh, date deviates from permissible range. So I'm just going to set it to the end of the calendar year. So 31, 12, 21. And the other thing I just need to change is this accounting year. I should call it 2021 as well, so that it sort of lines up with my period name. Um, and then I simply click Add. And essentially, I've got a whole heap of financial periods created, um, representing my 2021 period, starting from this line 13. So now that I've got my periods uh, created, um, that's all I need to do before the end of the financial year. Now, after that, um, once the financial year is complete, I've done all my postings, I've done all my adjustments, my accountant's given me all, all the things that I need, um, then I can go in and run the year and close process. Okay, and that one you do from administration, utilities, and period and closing. So in here you select the period that you're closing off. In my case I'm closing off the 2021 starting from the first month to the last. Now if the periods don't appear in this list it'll probably be because you've already you, you're the periods in question are currently locked. So you need to unlock them before you can do the year and closing on those periods. So let me just quickly show you that. It's the same place again, system initialization posting periods. You see these periods and you will have, might have to go into each individual one and change the status to closing period or something apart from locked. And then once you've completed the year and closing, then you can change it back to uh, being locked. All right, so back to my year and closing. Uh, I select the period, I select the range. I need to select my retained earnings account. And I also need to select the period and closing, which is simply a clearing account. Once I've selected those settings, uh, there are a few other options here, including um, being able to filter it based on some specific criteria. But in general, you, you wouldn't need to use those. Um, you just have your retained earnings period and closing, and then you click on execute. Now, when you click on execute, you'll get the balance in all your PL accounts for 
as at the end of that period, at the end of the financial year. Uh, and then you go in, you know, put whatever references you want to put in. You put the value date and document date as the last day of that particular financial year. And then you can put some comments that say, you know, for closing year end 2020. Um, you can review all the different tra transactions and balances. And once you're happy with it, you can simply double click on the header or a single click actually, and that'll select all the different uh, accounts. And then you click on execute. Once you click on execute, the system will run through, pick all the accounts and their balances, move those balances out of the PNL into the retained earnings account. And then you'll see once it finishes, the whole, you know, the whole grid will blank out because all the accounts have been cleared off. Now, once, once this is complete, essentially you've completed this, um, you can go back and um, change the, uh, the period's uh, status to locked. Um, and, but also if later on you get some further adjustments or your accountant tells you to do some other postings into this financial period, you can unlock it and run another year end closing if you need to. All right, it's still running through the process, almost there. And, and so then once that's done, the last remaining thing you may need to do is um, to, if you are using fixed assets with SAP Business One, then you'll have to roll over those fixed assets as well. And there is a separate rollover procedure for that. So as you can see, there's no more balances or accounts to be closed off. And that concludes this short video on how to execute the year-end closing and creating new posting periods in preparation for a new financial year. Thank you very much.